Hi folks, here's our little hater there, as you know, the one we restored. That's gonna go on sale next year, we're gonna keep that now. Let's see if we can make some money by finding a cheap mower on Facebook and then saving it for next year. Let's go have a look. Right, so we've been having a little look around Facebook for some uh, cheap lawnmowers. We come across this one, Sharon found this one. I'll take you and have a look at it. And uh, we're trying to pick, pick it up for 10 pounds. Now 10 pounds, not a lot of money at all. If you had the 10 pound note and put it in the bank and left it to next year, that would probably earn you maybe a penny, two pence, something like that. Not a lot of money at all. But we're gonna try and take a 10 pound lawnmower, uh, see and spend as little money as we can on it and see what we can turn that into in the way of profit so let's go have a look on facebook for a, a decent mower right so here we are on facebook and sharon found it we got it for 10 pounds as you can see that's one picture of it there so those are the two images that we uh we've got for it and as you can see there it says spares or repairs has grass but box did run just not very well so let's get over there and go and pick it up right okay then we've just picked up our 10 pound lawnmower and we're just going to take it home now. So let's have a quick look. Let me show you what we got. There we go. Well, as you can see, it's a lovely little laser delta with our Briggs and Stratton engine, the one I'll tell you about. As you can see there, it's a 35 classic engine. Exactly the sort of lawnmower you want to be looking for. It comes with a grass bag. All the wheels are there. Everything's there. The handle's there. The cable looks in, in good condition at the top there. So we're going to make our way home now and let's try and turn this little baby into some more cash. Right, okay, so here it is. I'm gonna try and start it up now. So, it's just a couple of little things I wanna check first of all. One, if it's got any petrol in it. Uh, two, lift the deck up to see if it's got anything wrong with a blade underneath. And uh, literally try and give it a pull start. And also to make sure if it's got any oil in it as well. Don't wanna really start it up if it ain't got no oil in it. So those are the three checks I'm gonna do first of all. And uh, then we'll try and give it a pull start. Not done nothing to it, just to see what we got. Right, well it's not full of oil, but uh, it's got oil in it. It's about just above the lowest mark and it looks very black as well. So we're, I'm gonna leave that for just for this preliminary start up. Let's have a look in the fuel tank. Again, I don't know what it's got in here, if anything. Well, it looks like it's got petrol in it, about a quarter of a tank. It looks in pretty good color. So I'm gonna leave that for the moment. Also at the front here, I noticed that the um, the rubber cap for the spark plug is uh, it's on, but it's, it's actually broken, so. Um, Gonna see how that goes anyway. So let's try and lift the blade up first of all. Look, lift the deck up. The blade looks okay. Looks like it's all there. So we'll try and give it a pull start. So as you can probably see, it's, it's actually started up quite well. It's running a little bit slow. It's running quite smoothly, but every now and again, after about uh, 20 seconds, as you can see, the revs dip a little bit. That could be due to fuel starvation, probably maybe because the air filter could be blocked, or it could be that there's uh, the restrictor in, in the pipe that goes into the carb, could have some rubbish around it, or it just could be a bad carbon diaphragm. So there's really not too much to do to this. It's running a bit slow, but as I say, we can speed that up on the uh, governor arm springs. There may be a problem with the springs, I'm not too sure yet. Everything else seems pretty sound on the lawnmower, so let's get it inside now, let's have a look at that carb and see if we can just find out why it's just doing that little bit of hunting. So let's get it inside. Oh, 
Right, okay. Here we are. As I say, there's no rot on this whatsoever, so it's a real good basis for us to start off. And bearing in mind, this only cost us £10, which is not a lot of money at all, and it's that runner. So all I'm going to do first of all, just to remove the covers, I'm going to change this cord as well. Because as you can see, that is actually frayed there. It's been joined up before, so that's obviously a problem. I'm going to remove the air filter. I'm going to remove the fuel tank. I may put another ignition module under here on as well because as you can see the insulator for the spark plug cap is uh, damaged on there and obviously water can get in there and that could provide us with an issue. But everything's there, the wheel mechanisms are all there. We've got the grass bag with this one so there's no problem there. The cable works for the rear brake and all oh, this is going to really require is basically a clean up I think. I'm not even going to bother to spray this down. I may just touch in these little bits around the bottom here with some red paint coming around this side as well we've got a bit of peelage there i may just as i say just touch that in with a bit of red paint nothing serious and literally just along the bottom there which is general for a lawnmower of this type and of this age i don't know if you can see that there but it says the uh, motor should be ticking over at around 3000 revs which this is obviously a lot slower so that's hopefully something we can address with the governor springs so let's just get this cover off get the uh, air filter off get the carburetor off and I think that's all we're going to have in regards to the problems with this machine. I'm going to change the oil, clear that oil, dirty old black oil out to take these bits off, so I'll see you in a minute. Right, okay then, we've removed the carburetor off of there. Everything looks to be pretty much in good order under here, to be honest with you. Looking at the uh, fuel in the fuel pump area there, there's a bit of dirt in the bottom there, but uh, nothing that I can't see that will uh, cause the, uh, the surging issue. There's no rubbish on the bottom of the pickup tube there, as you can see from the tank, and so that I've ruled that out as a possible problem. And what I am seeing here is the diaphragm here, this part here, is looking rather baggy, and that's a typical symptom of a, a surging lawnmower, because it gets baggy and that causes an issue with the pumping. So that could be the issue. So I'm going to probably change the diaphragm and gasket on here as well, and I'll give this a blowout and a clean out with some carb cleaner as well so that's all i've got planned for this as far as the uh remainder parts here again i'm going to possibly change this whole unit here with another one because i haven't got a new rubber boot to go on now i don't think you can slide these rubber boots on i will try it mind you but um if i could slide that or get that rubber boot off maybe put another one on there if not i'll just change the whole coil unit i've got some spares of them anyway now the governor springs here are, are pretty much all there and someone's locked it in the fast position you do that by just bending that tab down there so i'll leave that as it is but what i am seeing is that the springs are possibly just a little bit baggy that one's just fallen off for example off of here and one of the ways of start uh, speeding these up this smaller spring as you know goes on to here and if they are running a bit slow all you can do is just tweak this back a bit just put this under a little bit more tension this one and that will increase the revs a little bit so that's all we're going to probably do to that as well we're just going to give this a blow down. I'm not going to take the engine off. Nothing needs to come off here. Everything is going to be working all right. We're just trying to turn our £10 lawnmower into multiples of the £10 cash. So that's all going to stay the same. So here's my new diaphragm uh, and gasket. Just going to peel this one off. As I say, this is looking a bit baggy, this one. See, someone might have gone to the trouble of taking the carb off and cleaning it because it looks pretty clean. But uh, obviously, not realizing how important this gasket and diaphragm setup is uh, this being ultra baggy and that does cause the issue of surging so that's what we have got a surging issue so I'm gonna throw that down to one side just move that back there for a minute grab hold of some uh, carb cleaner here and again just let that soak for a bit and then I'll blow it through I'll just give the top of the fuel tank a little clean down as well Right, okay, that's that blown out. So, as you can probably see there, I don't think you can see in there now. There's the difference. All that is totally clean in there now, which it wasn't before. So, also these little jets here that go through the carbs, just give them a blow through as well. I've still got fuel in here, don't forget. And what you've got here is a little hole. I don't know if you can see it there. And if you actually blow air down there, it will make your bulb expand but if you keep pressure on your bulb as you can see it's, it's what's coming out of there now so if you blow down there keep pressure on there it'll actually back put back pressure and blow all through your, your tube out as well and 
come out here. So that's what I've actually done by putting the airline on that hose there and keeping your hand on there. As you can see, I'm pressing that down and a little bit of residual uh, fuel, fuel is just starting to come out. I'm gonna put the new gasket and diaphragm on now and then we can call this carb done. Now don't forget with these uh, diaphragms and gaskets, it's the diaphragm that goes on first onto the actual body of the tank and then your gasket goes on second and as you can see this part here which is a lot more rippled on the old one this one is a lot more tighter so make sure that your spring is still sitting on your carburetor when you go to put it back on drop it on and again just put your screws in not tightening up yet just drop them in they will find their way as I've said many times before they've got a little leading edge on them so just drop them through first of all little wiggle with the carb and gently tighten down in diagonals right okay there we go that's the carb we built and let's go over to the uh, lawnmower and let's put this back on I'm just gonna take the airline as well just to blow off around the uh, bottom of the deck as well so we do that first as well There you go then so I've changed over the coil I couldn't get that little bit off the end but um, I've put this new one on there as you can see well it's not a new one and that's the beauty of only working on one sort of lawnmower at a time all you do is you when ones that you can't fix you, you just strip them down you take the spares off them and keep them I was able to replace that at no cost so that's not cost me anything that might cost you 10 pounds if you was having to try and do this one up to sell because of that little rubber bit on the end there and as you can see I also re-gapped the coil to the flywheel and I've done that with a little bit of card I had to put the brake on, you probably didn't see that off camera. And all I've done there was loosen the bolts, turn the magnets around with a little piece of cardboard in between the actual C and the magnets on the flywheel, and turn the engine around until it grasped them. That pulled the ignition module to the magnets on the flywheel, and I just nipped the screws up, took the cardboard uh, sheet out, a thin bit of cardboard, and that now gapped that. So that's all fine now. And I also just bent this little lever there on our spring body there, as I say, because this was a little bit slack and I've just tweaked it back a little bit and that should just give us a little bit more tension on the governor arm spring and that should increase the speed of the uh, tick over and as I say if you bend that a little bit further back you will increase the speed of the tick over a bit more we don't want to go more than 3000 revs I'm not going to do that all I've got to do now is to paint the cover and change the oil so I'm going to do that now and I'll see you when I've finished <laughs>
Right, okay then, just take the plug out. I thought I would do, I wasn't going to, but I thought I just would check it. And as you can probably see there, it's very, very black. Again, we don't know whether someone's put this plug in or whether or not it was running like this. It, that's indicating it's running way too rich, which does show a possible carb problem or the air filter blocked. Uh, so we've cleaned the air filter anyway. We've done the carb and hopefully that should sort the problem out. I'm gonna clean this plug out, put this one back in. And as you can see, I've done a few other little jobs. I've got the casing back on, the carbs back on. I've been around and touched up the little bits of red that was broken there. I've not actually repaired anything. I've literally just painted over with some enamel uh, hammerite paint, uh, the smooth paint, filled up the oil, changed the oil, cleaned up the deck a little bit, and that's literally all I'm gonna do. All I'm gonna do now is just rub these white wheel covers down just with a bit of a uh, wire wall, just to clean them up with a Scotts Bright pad, and then that's gonna be it, and we're gonna try and start it after. We've also sharpened the blade as well, as you saw. Right, and there we go then. Nice little project done there. We've changed the oil in it, we sharpened the blade, we clean the air filter, we check the plug, we give it a general paint over and a clean, and we just touched in the little bits of paint as you saw there. No big repairs, no nothing on this one. It's probably taken about an hour and a half to do all the work I've done here. Spread over a few days, because I didn't do it all in one lot. But um, as you can see, that is now a running perfect lawnmower. The tick over speed is a lot faster now compared to what it was before. I could just bend that bracket a bit more if I wanted it to tick over a little bit faster. Anyway, that is how you turn 10 pounds into probably 50 pounds. I'm gonna keep hold of that lawnmower now till next year because we're now at the end of the lawnmower season. It's October, coming up to November now here in the UK. And although the weather's pretty warm at the moment, you can guarantee that you're gonna pick up some bargains over the Christmas period and in January because people will be laying their lawnmowers up full of petrol and when they come to start them next season, they might start, they might run, they might not run properly. They'll give them a few pulls, and if they don't start, they normally go out and go out and get another one. Anyway, that's enough from this one. Hope you've learned something from this one. You don't have to be a garage mechanic to work on these things. Stick to the Briggs & Stratton Classic engines, just like the one fitted to this lawnmower. You'll start gathering parts up, just like I have. I've put a new coil on there, if you remember rightly, because that little end, I couldn't really sell it like that, and I didn't want to wrap tape around it, it looks amateurish. So for the sake of picking up an old spare lawnmower maybe uh, for parts and stripping them down, you've got yourself an army of parts if you just work on one type of lawnmower. It gets a lot more tricky if you start to do many different types of lawnmower and then you can find yourself spending money instead of making money. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll see you again in the next video. We've got some nice lawnmowers coming up. I'm going to try and pimp a lawnmower up and uh, do a little customised lawnmower as well very shortly. So keep an eye on that as well. Anyway, thanks very much. See you in the next video. And until then... Bye for now.